So we are starting assignment four, what I call the cloud creature uh, composite assignment. And if we look at past student examples for assignment four, you'll see that the cloud creatures have very different sky backgrounds behind them. That is because this is the first compositing project where we're actually going to create an element ourselves. We are going to create our own pixels, but only for the sky. We are going to paint our own sky and then bring clouds in to manipulate and turn into something that suggests our fantasy creature from head to toe. So because we are introducing now the com combination of creating our own pixels and still compositing in from other sources, from found pixels, or what I call other people's pixels, right? We want to keep this question of the day in mind. What rights and responsibilities does, does an artist have when using and compositing found images? There are clearly legal boundaries to works that are copyrighted, and all works that are created are assumed copyrighted until the author gives away that copyright or stipulates that that copyright has changed in some way. And so copyright used to be all the, all the only game in town, but now we have Creative Commons, which is specifically for kind of digital design culture and sharing. This is something that Flickr started with. And Creative Commons allows you to modify the copyright on your own images and give, give it your image away for use with certain limitations or certain restrictions. So Creative Commons is not very simple. It has all of these different subsets, probably even more than these. Uh, one really common one is you can use it, but you can't profit off of it, right? Or you can use it, but you have to attribute it to its original author. You have to say like courtesy Carl Fry, who created this image. Um, or you can use it, but you can't change it, right? You can't alter it. You have to present it the way it was originally made. I think that's actually the equal sign one. It has to be the same as, as was originally done. Or PD, which just stands for public domain, is to give up all rights in perpetuity forever and just say you can do whatever you want with it. And public domain images are the only images that are absolutely free and clear. The, the most open Creative Commons copyright that isn't public domain is what's called Creative Commons Open, CCO. And that is what Pixabay, this uh, search and image resource, operates under. So if I search for cloud in Pixabay versus Google image, right, I can't limit it to, actually I can't, I can limit it to sizes, whatever I want, but it doesn't already give me like four megapixels or larger. So it has a lot of the advantages that uh, Google image search has, has, but it has far fewer images because all of these images have been given away by their artists under a Pixabay license, which is free for com commercial use and no attribution required. So it's basically the same as public domain with the difference that a Creative Commons open means that the, the artist can change their mind and revoke it at some point and pull the work back. Does that make sense? Which would be like a legal nightmare if, if you used it while they had it open and then they try to close it, but that burden is on them to kind of stipulate when things are used. So anyway, and what's nice about Pixabay, of course, is everything is, is uh, curated. So everything that's on there is judged by its members to be high quality, and it will give you fairly high resolution images. But whether you want to find your clouds through Pixabay, as I have, or whether you want to find them through Google Images, we are not going to assume that we can just use them as they are. It's always a good idea as a digital artist not to just assume you can use things as they are unless you are provided with a public domain image and you've seen the public domain listing of it and your job is to just you know colorize that public domain photo of the swamp creature from 1926. Otherwise it's always good to alter it and make it your own. Right. So we're going to continue to work under that assumption. So we go to Google Images and just reminding you, because this is our last, one of our last big compositing projects, 
before we find anything, we have to limit it to usable size. And because we're planning to print these out at at least eight by 10 inches, but at at least 300 pixels per inch, we want clouds that are at least four megapixels large, which is 2,272 pixels or more by 1,704 pixels or more. So that's the most important tool to use in, um, in Google Images. If we've had resolution problems on our landscape, on our creature, on our creature scape so far, it means we will not be able to print them for our portfolio because they only work at screen resolution, not print resolution. And if we tried to print them, they would just be so incredibly soft that it would make us think that the paper was bad or the printer was bad. And that's just a waste of resources, right? And then, of course, we can search by search terms, cloud. But, and we can actually search by, I wanted to show you this, usage rights, right? So Google Image does allow you to say, I only want to see images that are labeled for non-commercial reuse or labeled for reuse or labeled for reuse with modification, right? So the largest would be just labeled for reuse, right? That would be like the Pixabay options. And presumably, um, Pixabay results should show up on this, right? But also Wikipedia, and especially what are called Wikimedia, can be a good source because they kind of, they beat Pixabay to it. But Wikimedia sources, when people give over their images for Wikipedia, they often, they can stipulate different licenses, but they often use, use a Creative Commons. You see the CC there. And then you can actually find out more about that. So this is a CC that is called share alike, but attribute, right? So you're, it's a Creative Commons license, but you need to attribute the original author when you use it. And that is a little bit not like Pixabay. And that you have to make it open to others. So you can't just use it for your own use without also making it available to others. So there's a lot of a lot of stipulations to these different Creative Commons that you will find. Okay, now what if we just find clouds from anywhere, but we use more than we use five or more of them, and we don't rely on any one cloud more than any other, and those clouds are not going to be recognizable by their original authors. I think we have then met all the hurdles of transforming the source material into our own creative work. And therefore, it doesn't matter what the original license is. So that's always been our goal, right? But you want to know what the, what the rights are, not just of the images we're using, but the rights your images have once you create them, right? So that's our question of the day. Chapter two will help you with that. And I have used Pixabay just to give that extra layer of copyright protection. And these are the five clouds I pulled, right? So a student asked me, should they all be puffy clouds? Do they all need to be bright sunlight? No, they can be any kind of clouds you want, but they need to all work believably together. So if you're using storm clouds, you wanna find multiple storm clouds. I was actually a little shocked because Pixabay, which is growing all the time, but it has 677 pages of images with cloud as a tag, right? Now, a lot of those, you know, you're not gonna use the cloud but some of them have very dramatic clouds, right? And you know that they're all fairly high resolution. So I just used the first page and grabbed these five. But something you want to be aware of with clouds is where the light is coming from. So for this one, this looks really cool. And as I was driving to campus this morning, there was the sun behind the clouds. It looked like crackling or something. And having light behind the cloud, this is called rim lighting, is very different than having light above the cloud or having lightning sh shine behind a cloud, which really light, lights it up a lot uh, more directly than sunlight. Or, you know, just this big open field of cloud. I think I've gotten that one already. So the first, uh, once you have your cloud reference, you're looking for one big one that's really gonna help you. And I have two that are pretty big. 
that can help a lot. And that's going to be like our dough because we're basically going to be painting with cloud this project. So what do I mean? Now let's go right to Photoshop. Go ahead and open it up. And then we want to find our assignment to a PSD project. So I go to my folder. I'm going to bring it out to the desktop. So I can open it up, go to assignment two. I want my highest resolution PSD, just like if we were going to, to print it, we would work off of our highest resolution PSD. I open that up. And this is just to remind you how to make a PNG, how to make something transparent. This is the one that we had carefully cleaned up, right? We merged everything together, we cleaned it up. And so this is the one where I can see how well cut out it is, right? But it's also the one, very importantly, we want to check our image size and check our resolution. We want it to be 11 by 14 inches or larger at 350 pixels per inch. And that's going to be the same dimensions of our cloud creature. Okay, so I'm going to keep that. And now I'm going to merge all of these together. But keep them transparent. So I'm not going to flatten the image. Instead, I'm just simply going to say layer merge visible. And then layer, uh, not merge visible. I already had done that. But turn on all the things you need so that you can merge it visible. And then I'm going to delete all these other layers. All these ones I don't need anymore. Okay. Now we're going to bring in a cloud, a cloud sky. So I go to my cloud reference folder. And just like we've done in the past, I'm going to bring in, let's see, I'll use this one. Nice big cloud. Now, because they're clouds, and the reason I say you only need four megapixels or larger for this, as opposed to the six we needed for our creature components, or the, the 10 that we needed for our landscape components, is because clouds will soften as we, any image will soften as we grow it. And sometimes softening a cloud is not the worst thing in the world. So I'm going to go right to warp while it's still a smart object, and I'm going to push it and pull it. And I'm actually going to take its opacity down to about 50%. And I think of this as rolling the dough. I am rolling this cloud out like cookie dough, like a sugar cookie. So that the edges of the cloud, not the sky, but the cloud itself, completely cover my creature. Then hit return. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I put it back at 100%, you see how I have all this cloud, and I've warped it a little bit, and it covers my creature. I'll put my creature on top of it, and you can see. So that's step one. Now we're going to use our creature as a cookie cutter. And this is review, but it's very helpful to remember. If I use my magic wand with contiguous off and at a healthy tolerance, I click on the empty space. And because contiguous is off, it will get all of the little nooks and crannies, even if they're not touching. Anywhere I don't have pixels, it will select. So you see the little marching ants selecting around. That's the edges of my cookie cutter. Then I'm going to say select the inverse. So the opposite of that, select just the pixels of my creature. Now I'm going to go to my smart layer cloud that I've already stretched out. And I'm simply going to hit Command J. And it will duplicate that cookie cutter shape out of cloud, right? Just like if I had a Christmas tree, Christmas cookie, pushed it into my rolled out dough, and I can pull it aside and put it on a cookie tray. Now that I have that, I want to create a new blank layer behind the cloud. And this is going to be my sky. So I'm going to label it sky. I might label the color with blue. And this is the first time in this class we're going to create our own pixels, not just composite them from somewhere else. So 
instead of using the paintbrush tool, because it would take a long time to paint a blue sky with the paintbrush. Right. We could do it, but I don't want you doing that yet. We're going to be doing digital painting later. Instead, we're going to use 